Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. Welcome into the Sports Fanatic News Hockey Show. I'm Joe Boric of Sports Fanatic News and SteelFlyers.com, joined by a very special guest, Pirlo Wisdom. He's not really a guest anymore. He's always here with us, but he's also of SteelFlyers.com. And as you can see behind me with the three great gentlemen, we are going to be carrying on the tradition of NHL team previews with the Carolina Hurricanes today. So, Pirlo, how are you doing on this day after Christmas? Happy holidays, everyone, as well. Oh, doing great, buddy. Uh, it's just uh, just chilling. Got lots of time off here now. While we're well, I'm taking a little bit of break because hockey's gonna be starting, and it's gonna be full bore, man. Full bore when Steel Flyers is rolling. It's gonna be we're gonna be going full and bore. So. Rolling, yeah, yeah, For sure. Um, Carolina was a, a very good team last year. They were oddly enough one of the only six and five in overtime for being 38 25 and five that's just a funny number to look at when you realize how good their overall record was last year at all the way up to a 596 almost 600 a winning percentage there um this team does it right they build from the defense to the to running a good defensive system where Brenda Moore just makes certain defensemen look better than they are at times or fit in better than they maybe should is, is a way to put it where I think the two biggest uh, subtractions for the uh, Carolina Hurricanes this offseason is one being Vodden because of how well he fit in when he came in in Brendan Moore's system, but your defense is so deep, so that's not as vast of one. I think the bigger one might actually be just because of how much he means in the room and on and off the ice might be uh, have adjusting from Justin William. Since even though he was gone for half the year, he still came back in and was that extra spark. So now Carolina needs to find who's your extra, let me give you that little bit extra spark guy now that can provide that uh, in your lineup. Does that become Ajo at this young of an age, or does it become a guy like Trocek who's been around a bit? Who do you think might become the guy that takes the leadership role for Justin Williams? Oh, I think that's the reason why they brought in Faust, Jesper Faust. He's very much well known for his room presence and uh, getting uh, rallying guys and all of that. Uh, the Rangers really did not want to let him go, but the, with the young guys that they're going to have to pay here right away, they had no choice. I bet you it was very difficult for him for them to, to let him go. Um, I think he's going to do a lot that way. Um, as far as who else may be the spark, um, Yahoo, I mean, they do have a, they don't really have a raw, raw lineup in a lot of ways. Um, so Warren Fogle might take a step up that way now. He's a guy like that that's kind of um, been working on his own game and not really getting the voice out there probably as much as he can because they had the Williams and stuff like that. He could work on his own game and not worry about that. But I think you might see him step up in that role uh, a lot more. Um, I really I really like Warren a lot for his intangibles. Uh, so that would be a couple guys that I think could make up for it a little bit. I don't think you'll ever make up anything that Williams brings. Uh, I mean, he was just one of the greatest leaders of all time. Yeah, yeah, he was a guy that's been around for a while with the Capitals, with the uh, Kings, all the way, way back with the Flyers. Um, so, yeah, he's been around the realm, and he had a few Stanley Cups on his belt that you can't replace bringing in to a locker room. But uh, this year, when it comes to, of course, I just talked about how much Brindy touts his uh, defense of um, Slavin, Hamilton, Peche, uh, Shea, Try to say those three, uh, Pesce and Shea, three times fast together. Uh, Gardner, Bean, uh, Ryan, and Flurry. They definitely have, and then I didn't even mention Forsling, who's not a bad defenseman himself. Uh, they definitely have good defense depth uh, when it comes to if a couple guys get injured. Uh, I don't know if you agree with me on this, but the only guy looking at that, you question it, even if Brindamore is going to fit him in perfectly to his lineup, is probably Gardner. Yeah, um, Gardner has, as was feared after his back injuries in Toronto, um, has really taken a step back. Um, yeah. He he probably is only a 5'6", uh, if that. I mean, I could see him getting overtaken in the lineup by some of the guys you mentioned there. 
um, this year already. I could even see him being on the seventh pairing and going in and out of the lineup if he doesn't take a step up from last year because he just hasn't fit in here very well at all. Yeah, um, I think he's a guy they got to tr- because they've obviously, like I said, um, and I'm sure you would agree, have been really good with bringing in defense. That's why they brought in a guy like Brady Shea, who still has all the potential when you, if you can get him cooking, who's four years younger than uh, Jake Gardner is, and, and definitely has more upside than Jake Gardner. Um, Gardner is really, yeah, you hit it on the head. When you have major back surgery and injuries, it's not easy to come back from, and we unfortunately are seeing the wear and tear effects of that uh, on prime example with Gardner. Maybe this year he'll be able to, after having a lesser season, having that break and then coming back and now having a different uh, – maybe he's one guy that will benefit from not having his body calm down as much and he kept working at it and didn't lay off as much. Maybe that will be more beneficial for a guy coming back from – Back surgery, because I'm sure that could make you stiff. I don't really know. I just know that my back sucks at times, and that makes you stiff. So I'm sure if you just had surgery, it doesn't help anymore. Um, So I would just say, for me, he's the biggest question. But for me, their defense isn't, because then you go Bean, Joakim Ryan, and Hayden Flurry, or other guys that you could put in all for Jake Gardner, which would then be the reason why he could get bumped, because if Flurry does really well, and Bean does really well, who had almost a 50-point season uh, in the AHL last year, uh, they're going to definitely not hesitate to put him in. But that's actually my next question. That's why I led into that with Jake Bean. What are your thoughts on their young defensive prospect, Jake Bean, and do you think he has a good chance to actually crack the opening day lineup? Well, certainly with uh, Gardner uh, being there, like I just said, it's very possible he could. Um, I'm looking down here. He's a right defenseman, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, I believe so, if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to find him here. Uh... No, he he's a he he plays. No, no he's a lefty, actually. He's a left Excuse defenseman. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, he yeah. could take that spot. Um, they've been grooming him for quite a while in the minors and they got, I think that, that, yes, I, I now see it. They really, really want to see what they have in Jake Bean this year. He's 22 now. Um, he was, he's been in the minors for about two, three years. Uh, they got an expansion draft coming up and because he's been a professional for over two years, he's going to have to be protected. This is the year that they're going to find out what they have in Jake Bean. So uh, this is why I think Jake Gardner will, might take a step back almost regardless of how well he looks in camp Um, because they are going to be giving these young guys as much of a chance as possible to make this lineup to see what they have so they can look at what their roster is going to be for the future. Um, uh, Yeah, so Jake Gardner almost has to really grow, or really not grow isn't the right word, but has to have a complete turnaround right away to keep this roster spot. I think it's actually against his... Uh, against the likelihood of Gardner being able to fill, take that spot in the five spot. Yeah, um, the thing with Bean, his biggest question is his defensive consistency. He's a great power play specialist and offensive puck mover. Where will his defensive consistency be at the next level from the forefront? The problem for Jake Gardner is that's his biggest question. So <laughs> I don't think that's going to uh, delay – them from calling up Jake Bean either. Yeah, I agree with that. I think they would bring him up and let him fall into place on probably the second power play unit and just kind of take the reps. That Gardner, the way that those two play the game, Bean is a guy with all the potential that Gardner had when he first came up, and then some potentially before the back surgery. So he's probably going to be the guy, you're right, to end up replacing Jake Gardner eventually, which is going to be tough because you're not going to want to do that just for simplistic uh, business reasons uh, early on because you're paying Jake Gardner over $4 million for the next three years. So in your own special interest, you're going to want to see if he can do well in the first half of the season. And then if he's having a good power play season himself, maybe you can pitch him to somebody that's really struggling on their power play in order to up their ante a little bit for the, so they have them for 
two and a half years at that point. Um, so I, it's going to be interesting what Carolina does there from a business perspective and not just a necessarily skill set and player perspective as well. Because as we know, this is as much of a business as it is uh, how well are you performing and all that extra good stuff. But another guy that I even forgot to bring up that has become a surprise guy is – um. I don't want to say he's like a overly surprised guy because he's a good player, but that kid, uh, Joey Keene, they played for Charlotte. Oh, he's yeah. been developing as well. So the more and more a guy like him develops along with uh, uh, Jake Bean as a former third rounder that they got from in a trade with New York, um, that is going to push back guys and move guys like Gardner out sooner that they're going to want to get rid of because then you're going to have to find a place for two guys and not just one, which is a good problem to have. But they already don't have a place for two guys. That's why I feel like one of these other guys is likely to either be moved or the problem will fix itself when Dougie Hamilton might have to walk uh, in free agency if Carolina doesn't have the funds uh, to keep Hamilton in house. That's uh that's why they have a lot of good problems right now, because we know Carolina has never been known to be the big buck spenders of getting a guy if he was going to command the elite contract. And Hamilton, if he really comes out this year and shows out, definitely could command that. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go in the future um, with Dougie Hamilton as well. But this year on the hockey news, they had them ranked at eighth when it was still projected as an 82-game season of the whole entire shebang as the uh, whole league. So, obviously, in the Central Division, that now has Columbus, Dallas, and probably Tampa, as the with Nashville being the other outlier as a good um, team, depending if they can actually continue to perform or if they drop back. Uh, I would say Carolina's probably in that top two in most people's eyes going in would you agree or disagree with it i agree um if they can if if somehow mirazic gets hot or they can find goaltending i would put them number one honestly you mentioned joey keen i like him better than they're all everybody else i joey keen has grown so fast uh put up he he only had a small window, but it was seven points in nine games in the AHL after college, where he ripped he and he ripped it up in college. Um, I really like his the way he's progressed. Uh, it was a great pickup for them. Uh, I'm just going to check here. They drafted him what third in the third, third round, round two, the Rangers 2018, game. and he's been going nowhere but up ever since they drafted him. It's been uh, projectile. So uh, yeah, I I would. I, I could see them if they can get the goaltending. I could see them taking out Tampa to tell you the honest truth. They're they're just that they're so deep and so well coached. Yeah, and uh, Brenda Moore really integrates his defense well. Where it will be interesting because both Keen and Bean that that's also going to get annoying to say three times fit. Um, but both Keen and Bean um, are very good power play specialists that can move the puck. Um, Carolina certainly has a few of those that are not the most consistent in the defensive end. So I think I'm really what I'm looking to see this year is guys like uh, Brady Shea and guys like Hamilton, who are more obviously great at moving the puck. And obviously Dougie's great offensively, maybe in Brenda Moore's system, take more of a defensive step as well. Cause then that will allow guys like a Keen and a, and a, um, being to fit in better if Brady Shea is more doing what he did at the end of his stint in New York and getting caught sometimes that won't work as well with a team of a bunch of more offensively fleet foot inclined defensemen because they might be able to get back but they might get back and just trip everybody every five seconds so so you need to have it fit in and I think it will fit in over time but it will definitely be interesting how this all fits in for Carolina I do think Bean probably has the better chance to make it this year with Keen being the guy that might make it either the end of this year for a cup of coffee or definitely next year because if a Hamilton or one of the other guys that's likely to be traded um, in Carolina's lineup as they make room for a young guy is moved to make room to sign Dougie Hamilton. 
that's yeah. kind of the way I could see that playing out in my head. But uh, either way, they're in a good spot. But when it comes to other young guys, they got a guy who, if it came to other teams, Morgan Geeky had 42 points in 55 games. Looks like he's going to be – his skating is questioned. But other than that, it looks like he can definitely be a good bottom six guy, at least a uh, third liner for an NHL squad. If it came to some other teams, he would probably definitely be making their forward core uh, off the get-go. But with how deep this team is, there's definitely a chance he doesn't. And if he does, maybe it would be the fourth uh, line even to start. But what are your thoughts on uh, Morgan Geeky? And do you think he's more of a guy for the prospects of their lineup or to use to get other good trade bait like they were able to get in a guy we brought up, Joey Keene, a former third-rounder? Um when they got him in a trade with the Rangers back in the past. So do you think they'll use him for the good Carolina steel trades or they'll actually use him as a player in their lineup? Uh, that's going to be interesting. You know, if they can find a home for Niederreiter, who doesn't seem to be working out there very well, maybe somebody will give him one more chance out there. I could see Morgan Geeky staying, and I think they would prefer something like that because Morgan Geeky reminds me of, uh, reminds me of Maroon a lot. You know, and and Carolina and you were we were talking about guys who's going to take up that, uh, you know, uh, spark that Willie after Williams. That's a guy we didn't bring up. And Morgan Geeky does give you that type of spark. He's he he's not great. I mean, he's got a pretty decent shot. He gets in the right places on the ice. But I don't. Nobody gives you more than Morgan Geeky. Uh, you, he's he's just fun to root for. He's that type of guy where you just on a root for him, you know, and he gets the best and the most out of his body and his skills. Um, he's a guy you don't really want to leave a team. So I, if they can't find a place for Niederreiter, uh, um, then uh, or somebody like that, then unfortunately I think he's going to have to be used as a uh, tool to bring in maybe a goaltender from Razik and uh, Reimer or Faltering, which is possible. Or something of that nature, but it's too bad because uh, he could really be used it well there. Yeah, um, that would also obviously depend on if uh, Nadelkovic, uh, maybe if one of the guys just falters, could then become a platoon guy. If two of the guys falter, yeah, then obviously they have to go out and um, get a goalie likely in that scenario. For their goaltending scenario in the foreseeable, it is not terrible if um i am sorry in advance for the guy's name i wrote down but kachektov uh, who played in the world juniors in the past and did well for russia actually can stay healthy because <laughs> their, their one goalie uh performs well when he stays on the ice it's just it goes back to the old um saying when it comes to and he's still under a KHL contract anyways you're gonna have to wait a little bit but with Kachekov uh, it comes back to the old saying your best asset is availability but when he's available um like I've been reading about him and when I've uh, read on my magazines and the hockey news you look at his stats from the world juniors he did put out good stats in short succession for the KHL he put out a 2.85 um in a 901 save percentage so nothing sparking but nothing too bad to start at the only the age of 20 um in that league as well so he could be something to build off of with health being the key going forward but that's still about a three-year thing but that's just to give carolina fans hope with their goaltending and nadelkovich is also a guy that i like i just don't know if he's a full-time starter that's the quite that's the big glaring thing over that I have with him right now. I think he can be a backup and I think he could probably be a platoon. I don't know about a full-time starter. Um, yeah. as uh, also Jack LaFontaine out of Minnesota has had some pretty good numbers and pretty good years as well. Like really good years. Uh, two years ago, 19, 2019, 20, he was had a 9.19 at a 2.54. And this year in eight games, he had a one GAA and a nine and a point nine six five. Yeah. So I mean that that's uh, that's a possibility uh, in the near future as well. 
Yeah, so they got a couple options. They got three there with Fontaine, Nadelkovich, and uh, Kachektov. So hopefully those guys can uh, pan out for them. And then they were, of course, able to bring in the talented uh, young, um, small guy, but very talented Seth Jarvis. Um, So you see how he develops in their farm system over time as well. And then Dominic Bach did very good for Sweden in the world juniors and is now playing over in Sweden, if I'm not mistaken, um, and doing pretty solid as well. But as we are wrapping up to the final three points here, uh, we will assess this Carolina hurricanes roster. And because we talked about the division, the only time I really answer the question of negative to bad is for teams that I think have a chance to go negative. So good for you, Hurricanes fans. I don't think you do have a chance to go negative. So we'll skip over that question and say, what do you think are the reasons why the Carolina Hurricanes are going to make the postseason? And in doing so, um, you kind of already answered this one, but where do you think they will end up being in that division in the postseason? Um, yeah, as of right now, I still got to go with number two with their goaltending situation, second. But why I think they're going to uh, make the playoffs, uh, one big reason is I think Shvechnikov could, you know, in an 82 game could have had 50 goals this year. So um, in what are they playing, 56? So he could have have a 25 to 30 goal season. Uh, Sebastian Ajo could could win a Selkie as soon as this year. Uh, I mean, Tuvo Teravainen has quietly been a point per game player for them for quite some time. Um, the the second line of, if, if, if I don't know, Nito, Nito Niederreiter, my gosh, what a frustrating guy to, to, to watch. But with their, uh, even if they put Foss there or Martin Nietzsche is probably going to take that spot, they got a solid second line. As far as forward depth is concerned, I don't think there's anybody deeper in the league. They are uh, stacked all the way through this lineup. They have offense all through the forward lineup. And, of course, one of the best top fours in the league in Slavin, Hamilton, Shea, and Pesci. So that pretty much spells making the playoffs for sure right there alone. Um, Just if they can hold on or find a replacement for Mrazek and Reimer, as you know, I'm not a big Mrazek fan. Um, I think especially in the playoffs where he has uh, they he, people get to see him every night. He's got holes and they can figure it out pretty quick. Um, but besides that, even at that, Roddy Brindamore is turning out to, is growing up to be growing growing to be one of the best coaches in the NHL and uh, is showing that he can bring um, really average teams into the playoffs so a team like this he certainly can that's for sure that's really the reason why i like it's like we said if you have morgan geeky may not make the lineup that's some depth on a lineup. and when you have jake bean um and keen with how well he's been doing neither might make the lineup until the halfway point if all goes well then that's when you know you have pretty good defense very good defense depth uh wow. Also, so yeah, I agree with you. I think because of the difference of goaltending between the Tampa Bay Lightning to the Carolina Hurricanes, that would make me think they're a second place team uh, coming in. But uh, Slavin just keeps getting better and all encompassing more and more as time goes on. Um, And obviously, Pesce now coming back when he got injured, uh, that was a bigger loss than people realize because they have a stacked defense, but he's a big leader and heart and soul part of their defense that's been there for a while along with Slavin where other guys are kind of in and out in Carolina uh, in terms of their defense other than Hayden Flurry. Um, so, yeah, I think because of their depth, uh, when Hayden Flurry also might be a guy, if uh, Gardner does play well and ends up starting, might be off of your depth chart to start a season, that's when you know your defense is uh, really yeah. good. So that's why they win. I think – Carolina is a team with Waddle as well that just tends to make all the right moves. Like we said, they got Keen, uh, who took off uh, even more since they've had him. Uh, they brought in Dezingle, who seems to fit in well. Nita Ryer doesn't fit in as well, but he's had his thing is he has the speed and the skill. He's just never been able to put it together. So you see why teams give him the opportunities. Maybe now with Brindy, maybe in the second year, he will 
finally start to put it together and he can be a consistent third liner at least because you already have the Dezingles, the Fogles, the Fast and the Nakus of the world. So even if he can't be a second liner, you're still pretty set as long as he can contribute at a uh, third line rate. Yeah, uh, like six, he's six, six, two, two, eighteen. Yeah, so he's, uh, yeah. You know, third he's fast. He's fast. I mean, even if he's not, well, it doesn't reach what they think everybody thinks he could have reached. He's still an asset to your lineup. So, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And um, Nakis is a guy, too, that I remember when reading about him, they said he has 60 point upside as soon as oh. possible. Where oh, uh, that was, of course, in an 82 game season. If he scores 60 points in a 56 game season, he might win the MVP. Um, so, but that's, uh, definitely an equivalent if you space that out. So, yeah, I think this team's going in all the right directions. I think if they get a goaltender, yeah, then they definitely have a chance like you hit on earlier in the video to become in first place in the division. But do you have any, uh, wrap up thoughts on Carolina or is that pretty much, uh, well, I would like to mention I, I, I really love Martin Nietzsche a lot. I think he's going to take a huge step forward this year. Um, to me, there, I will say that there, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Vincent Trocek can get his game back. And uh, Ryan Dezingle sort of floated around the lineup. Uh, he's kind of a utility guy now. If there's a slight weakness, it could be the second line. But... It's not really. I mean, it's weak for their team, but not weak for most teams. Um, it's going to be fun. I'm going to be rooting for Roddy Brindamore. He's one of my favorite uh, hockey personalities of all time. It's one of the reasons why I'm a Philadelphia fan today. So I'm rooting for Carolina, and uh, I think they're going to be fantastic. Yeah, I think they're going to be good this year as well. I think they also have a bright future with a uh, – excuse me, with uh, Bean, Jarvis, Suzuki, Ryan Suzuki, of course, uh, Bach and Geeky all developing along with Keen. Um, And then uh, Panamaraev, who uh, played in the queue and I believe is in the World Juniors, if I'm not mistaken, right now. Scored two. Scored two goals. Yes, scored. I was going to say, I believe he scored. He had 50 points last season, or it might have been right around 50, but either way, he's a hell of a player. So they got a bright future and a bright present. So congratulations to the Carolina Hurricanes fans for that. And maybe their Christmas gift uh, will be having Jake Bean and other guys come up and even bring more success to you guys to start off at the jump of January 13th. So this has been the Sports Fan News NHL Team Preview Carolina Hurricanes Edition. For Pure Wisdom, I'm Joe Boric of Sports Fan News and SteelFlyers.com, which we are both at. You can check us out on www.steelflyers.com and hit Pirlo up on his Twitter at Pirlo's NHL Pal and mine at JJBoric26. Have a great and happy holidays, everybody. Peace out.